So this is an AWS host on which I have downloaded and built Vitess. I have also set up the Vitess environment on this host. As you can see, um, all of it is there. I have cloned three more AWS hosts using the home volume from this host. And the four hosts, this one and the three other ones, are listed in the file um, home ubuntu bin host list. You can see those here. We are going to use this file to specify hosts when we deploy. Uh, the names of the hosts are public hosts name, host names. Uh, those host names can be accessed from outside AWS. We do this because we want to be able to access these hosts from a browser. Now, we will start out by cloning the deployment helper tool from JYDevTest. And deployment helper is a tool that helps you configure a Vitess cluster. It also has a demo mode where it configures an initial cluster for you and walks you through a resharding demo. This is the demo that we are going to run today. We will configure a cluster on the four hosts that I showed you in that file. And initially we will start with two shards and then reshard it into four shards. Now most of you will want to run this demo on one host and do a one shard to two shard resharding which is of course perfectly fine and it will all work correctly. And in that case, you just have to accept the default prompts from deployment helper. Now, of the four hosts, we will distribute Zookeeper on three hosts. We will run VTCTLD and VTGET for the whole cluster on this host. And we will distribute the VT tablets on all four hosts. Deployment helper also does the VT tablet distribution for you. Uh, the demo runs with deployment helper.py in generate mode and then runs the generated scripts. So here is the usage for deployment helper. This is what a deployment helper tool can do for you. We are just going to run the demo today. So let's start the demo. Um, first, we start out by specifying the name of the cell, cell 1. Then we have to choose what kind of a lock service we want to use. Vitess supports both ZK2 and HCD. Um, this demo, though, and deployment helper at the moment only supports ZK2. We will select ZK2. Now, the default shown for the host is this current host. But what we will do is now we will specify the file in which we have the four hosts uh, specified so that we are creating our we are distributing our zk2 on three hosts out of those four now you can you will see that instance one is being run on this on, on each of the instances as you can see is being run on three different hosts and the ports are also given so we just accept the defaults for the vtctld we don't want it to, it to be distributed. We just specify this particular host, which is 219. Um, so we just hit enter here. Similarly, VTGET, we want to run on the same host. So we run here. VT tablet, again, we, we will copy and paste the same file here so that the VT tablets get distributed all across. Uh, now is the place where we can configure shards. So currently, there are no shards configured. We will add new shards. How many shards do we want to add? The default is one, but let's add two shards because we are going to do a two shard initially to a four shard resharding demo. So 
we said two. Uh, the deployment helper actually generates the names of the shards for you, so you just accept the default. Then for the first shard, it asks you how many replicas you want, how many read-only you want. You, uh, the second shard, you just keep accepting. And now I would like to point out these important things to you. The distributed 10 tablets, so you can see that each shard has five tablets, so a total of 10 tablets, and a weight and uh, in deployment helper has distributed those 10 tablets across four hosts for you and the hosts will be presented to you as defaults so you can see as you go how the various cells uh, of various types are distributed across the four hosts in a way so that the masters and replicas and read only are as diversely distributed as possible um, so you just more or less accept the defaults. Then it asks you for the various uh, setup of the various users and various um, database configuration, connection types. So the privileges and then the permissions that you want to grant for the various roles, um, to VT replica, VT filtered, so on and so forth. Um, CAR set, we use VT, you, uh, you know, we use UTF-8, uh, the database name, uh, VT underscore server underscore key space, and generate, uh, deployment helper has generated all these scripts for you based on your inputs. So this is the generate mode. And now the demo will start the cluster uh, using this, these generated scripts for you. So we, we, will, we will see that. First, it wants to bring uh, Zookeeper up. We say yes, and as you as we configure it, there's those three Zookeeper instances will run on three different hosts, and zkapp.sh actually does that for you. Uh, similarly, the VTCTLD, we bring it up, and this is brought up on this host, and we will uh, take this URL, and we will go here, and we will actually uh, look to see the VTS control panel has come up. There are no key spaces right now. This will change as we go. Now we will bring the VT tablets up. Again, the various VT tablets are distributed across four hosts and they will be correctly started on all four hosts as you go. And you can see that it's first starting the tablets for shard dash eight zero. Now if we go here, and if we look at the dashboard, soon we will start seeing the... tablets. So you can see that each of these tablets is being started correctly on uh, a different host. And you can see that for every tablet, a separate start script was generated in a subdirectory for the host name. For example, VT tablet up instance 101.sh, 102.sh, so on and so forth. So each instance, a separate shell script has been generated and that's the shell script that is being started. So this will start a total of 10 tablets for you for two shards. Um, so you can see that, uh, now let's see whether we can see all of these here. Yeah, you can see that there are several key spaces or key space, there are two shards. It is dash 80, there is no master so far. Um, there is 8.0, there is no master so far. And uh, now we will go ahead and specify the first replica as a master. You can see that this is the command that we will run in it shard master. So we do that. Similarly, now we do that for the shard 8.0. 
And now if we again go back here, we will see that the first the first one is the master. Um, we go here, the second one is the master. So similarly, this is the, uh, you know, you can use VT, VTCTL client to query all tablets for cell one from the VTCTLD and you will see the same output here. Now we are going to uh, apply the schema to all tablets in the key space and we are it's going to be it's going to come from this this file in example uh, examples local we are going to apply the schema okay the schema has been applied similarly uh, we will take a backup uh, this is for the first shard this is for the second shard So 102 and 202, we can uh, look at status for that, and it's healthy. Um, schema, current schema queries. I think there was a, anyway, so that's, uh, now we, we will, list the backups and then now we will apply the schema v schema to this so this schema has been applied and now we will bring up vt gate and we inserted rows and these are all the tablets um, the vtctld is up here vt gate is up here we can look at the vt gate um, output if we want um, you can see the various things uh, you can see the <coughs> health check um, we will uh, go back to the VTCTLD So now that we have the first, uh, now that we have the first uh, two shards up, we are going to run the resharding workflow, and we are going to reshard them into four shards. So we say yes to the demo sharding workflow now. Um, now we are going to run the deployment helper again with the action generate and component vt table, and actually this prompt is not correct we have to enter 4 um, so if we run this command yes cell is still remains the same um, we are going to we just because if you look at the if you look at the command line options for generate there was one option called use config without prompt so if a config was found like for example it found a log server json config from last time so it, it just used that without prompting it found zk or json so it used it without prompting similarly for, for vtctld and now it has come to a place where we need to add more tablets for new shard for vt tablet so uh, it again asks us to specify hosts so he it shows you a currently configured hosts and now this this host is already there in the currently configured host so if we just accept it it will realize that it's there and it will just use one set of, out of it now now we will gather information for shards we need to add new shards so the current shards are 80 and dash 80 we have to enter the number of new shards we enter 4 it generated the shard names for you and again it will ask you how many replicas and how many read only and we say for each of them um, two and two for replica and read only and one master so there are 20 total tablets and again those 20 have been they will be distributed across the four hosts that we have uh, set up and now it will ask us 
you know give those as defaults and ask us to enter we will accept all the defaults and let it let you know, use all the ones that have been distributed by deployment de helper so it generated video tablet up.sh and video tablet down.sh and in between it also generates up and down scripts for each shard and so you can now see here what is being run the first time is the video tablet up shard for the dash 40 shard so it will start those five tablets first distributed on all different hosts then it will prompt you to if you want to read uh, run the up shard script for the next shard yep so the next one is dash 40 dash 80 the 40 to 80 and yes we will run those five those five tablets will be started uh, so on and so forth it will start all 20 tablets now if we go back here and if you look at the shards we can see that the original two shards are there and there are two non-serving shards um, Okay, the second shard is done. Now we will start the third shard, which is the AT to C0. So it's starting the tablets for the third shard. Now I would like to point out to you that some of these uh, tablets are being started on this host. And as you can see, it says that that command is being run locally. Um, versus most of the commands which are being run remotely on specific hosts so now if you when we go here we should see um, three three non-serving shards the atc0 shard is coming up Okay, this has come up and now the final shard we will bring that up that's the c0 dash shard and you know after the demo you can go and you can look at all these scripts uh, which will show you what is happening under the hood so it, it creates a hierarchy of scripts scripts there's a vt tablet up.sh which starts all shards uh, then it, it calls the up shard for every shard then for every shard there is a script that calls each tablet so there is a hierarchy, three deep hierarchy of scripts um, and the final the, the scripts that start shards are actually saved in a subdirectory uh, with the name of the host as you can see here Oops. this is this has a subdirectory with the name of the host in it in entered so okay so all the all have been started so if you look at this two shards plus these four are not serving so now we will see the same thing by doing a list tablets uh, all of them are not serving uh, now we will initialize by electing the first master for each of the new shards okay so we will start out by the for the key space dash 40 so then the, the 4080, then the 80C0, then C0 dash. So now we have selected masters for all four of them. And if we do a list tablets, we should be able to see a master for each of the shards. Similarly, if we go here and choose any one of them, we can see that the first one is the master. So okay, we have um, selected the master. Now what we are going to do is to copy the schema 
from the old old shard which was shard dash ab the first shard to the one of the the, the first of the new shards uh, so the sh we are co copying the schema now we will copy the schema to the second shard Now before we copy the schema and apply the v schema these tablets are basically completely empty they're you know they're tabula rasa and uh, it's only after we copy the schema and copy the um, v schema that they they know what they're for so we have now copied schema for all four shards um, you can go up here and you can actually now look at the schema for uh, yeah 4080 for example you can see the schema here um, now what we are going to do is uh, uh, oh by the way the uh, these error messages you can ignore them fail to reload schema etc um, that's a warning it's not an error and uh, the command still is still succeeds even if this warning is given now what we are going to do is we are going to um, call split clone on cell 1 key space dash 80 and this the dash 80 is covered by the first two shards of the first two of the new shards so we don't need to give it target charge it actually you know we did have it that's figured out by Vitas so we just hit the enter and what it's going to do is to take uh, dash 80 <coughs> and this succeeded it caught process nine rows so it took those nine rows and it, it copied it into the first two shards now we will do the same thing for the second of the old shard and it will be copied into the third and fourth shard, shard. So this was the second one had only three rows and those got copied. Now um, let's add six. So now what, what has been set up is that the initial rows have been copied and a replication has been set up from the old shards to the new shards. So if you add anything to the to the old shards those rows will also show up in the new shards so we will see this so we added a few rows now we are going to uh, fetch them from the original shard set um, so there were 10 and 8 18 okay so you can see that the first shard had 10 rows, the second shard had 8. There's a total of 18. And now we, we should see that the four shards in the new shard set, if you total up the rows in them, that should come to 18. We will see if that is the case. 3 in first, 7 in, so 3 plus 7, 10 plus 3, 13 plus 5, 18. Great. So they're all there. So now as a part of the resharding workflow, we run this command called split diff. Um, on the first shard, first of the new shards. Um, it runs everything and you can see the various checks that it is doing and um, it succeeded. Now for the second shard, succeeded. Third shard, succeeded. Fourth shard, succeeded. Fantastic. Now we are ready to switch over to serving from the new shards because um, so what we are going to do is that we are going to use this command called migrate serve types um, from for the three different types of tablets on each of the older shards. So shard dash 80 read only type tablets. We are going to migrate serve types to the new shards. Similarly for replica. Now this process is you can undo this process anytime until you have switched the master. Once the master is switched, you cannot undo it because the new rows which are 
are going to go into the master and they are not actually going into the old master now. So the first shard is done, the second shard is read only and is done, replica is being run. And the master has been switched, so everything is switched. So again, we, we will do the similar test to what we did last time. We, we will add six rows to the database, but now they will only go into the four new shards and the two old shards will not get them. So there should be a discrepancy of six rows between the old and the new. So we add these six rows. Now let's see what's going on. Um, the old ones for the eight, uh, for the 80 and dash 80 there are 18 rows total and the new ones 5 plus 7 12 plus 4 16 plus 8 24 so you can see that there is a discrepancy of six rows the, there are six extra rows in the new four shards compared to the two old shards so you can see that the, all the traffic is now going to the to the new shards um, now we can down the two old shards the first we will down the dash 80 shards so all five uh, tablets associated with the uh, old shard dash 80 will come down now while this is happening let's go back here now if you look at this now there are four shards that are serving and two are non-serving as it should be now we have brought down the tablets for the first shard. Now we will bring, bring down the tablets for the second shard. Now we will deregister or delete shard the dash 80 shard and if you look here we will probably see that only that one has disappeared only one is remaining now <clears throat> now we will delete that one also and you can see that this is fully gone only four serving shards are here and the old old shards have disappeared so the sharding is now complete and that completes our demo for today. Um, here is where uh, deployment helper generates uh, its various files. Um, which is deployment uh, in bin and config. In config, if you look at, it has various JSON files in which it has recorded the input that you gave it, and it also generated the init db.sql file which is applied to all the new databases that are created when tablets are created um, this was also using the permissions etc that were taken as input and then there is the bin file bin uh, bin directory and this has a shard level up and down uh, files top level up and down files and then there are subdirectories for um, each host in which you have tablet level and instance instance level files like you can see zk up and down files and uh, tablet instance up and down files etc so this is the demo of the uh, vitess tools deployment helper i hope you found it useful thank you